so this is like a more of a sessions we are going to take it so during your mock exams or we, which we are going to conduct in the future so that time you will get the the gross images so where you're going to describe the specimens and where you will be able to answer so that give you an idea so this is more of an uh, how we are going to take the um, how are you going to approach the data sets okay then comes the gist so here again the same you will get the specimen and you're going to go have a set of questions and you're going you're going to see that and the first thing what you do is you're going to mark it uh, a and b becomes one margin and see if you are well, above, uh, well aware that if it is a proximal or distal in margin then you mention about it if not if you don't know which is proximal and distal just mention as in this case just mention you put it uh, a and uh, one in margin other is other is another in margin and you are going to give uh, a sections and for the gist the one thing you should remember it's a uh, um see for uh, gastroesophageal uh, tumors i said it is uh, at minimum four to five sections you have to give but in case of gist it is a mesenchymal tumor it is a heart tumor you are going to give uh, tumor sections in such a way that one block per centimeter so that's how it is and you have to make sure that you have uh, uh, taken all the samples with variegated appearance as in case here you see the hemorrhagic areas and few looks like a necrotic area so those areas should also be covered so this you have to tell in the viva that uh, uh, proximal distal margin and tumor sections uh, one block per centimeter and uh, with the some uh, variegated areas also be taken Mm, uh, for the tumor sections and most important for the gist you have to take a molecular block because that is an essential core data items because any gist you are going to perform CK10 um, CD117 so in that case uh, you have to definitely do a molecular block so you have to mention that in your block key that I'm one block with high neoplastic content with adjacent mucosa will be assigned as a molecular block and this question was asked how are you going to assign a molecular block uh, so in, in that case you are going to say that a block with high neoplastic content with adjacent mucosa uh, will be assigned for the uh, molecular block okay and then uh, adjacent mucosa to look for any uh, abnormal pathologies as in case of uh, familial gist you will have some precursor lesions and if it's crm is there you have to ink and take the um, block as well and the lymph nodes if it is accompanied um, so even if it is not there you are going to mention everywhere this lymph node uh, even if it is not there in the picture okay so again how are you going to describe this is going to be your uh, macroscopic uh, macroscopic core data uh, items as well so it's a duodenal resection specimen uh, see here uh, most of the times uh, they will give you in case of just whether it is a duodenal resection or uh, uh, intestinal or stomach if not if not uh, if you try to understand whether it is a small intestine or a large intestine and try to give uh, accordingly so duodenal resection specimen and which measures a uh, dash and human length and the external surface even if you can't see you're going to comment on it the external surface even though i couldn't see it, it i will check for it uh, whether and i will write whether it is unremarkable or remarkable if remarkable any perforations or if it is there i would check for it you should mention that then you are coming for the cut surface there you could see a tumor which is protruding into the lumen and how it is measured uh, so and so in mm and the tumor appear uh, uh, here uh, in the for the gist it's important whether the tumor is arising from the subserosa or serosal or uh, uh, mucosal so it is important for that uh, so you try to give it if you can't find it also just try to mention it as a subserosal so at least the examiner is aware because unless we have a specimen in hand it is very hard to tell that so that's why i'm saying that you try to give uh, tell it in approximately so that the examiner is aware that you are trying to find it so that that's a clue you should give them to fetch you marks and the tumor is away from uh, which end and the other from uh, away from other end the cut surface uh, they do not here actually they do not they have a little of a um, necrotic area uh, but there is no mixoid changes but the foci of uh, hemorrhagic areas are also noted the rest of the mucosa appears unremarkable so that is also important the rest of the mucosa how it does it how does it look that should also be mentioned okay then the next question what is your possible diagnosis so here you're going to write it looks like a mesenchymal tumor arising from the wall of git most likely gastrointestinal stromal tumor definite diagnosis and appropriate grading i will be will be done under microscopy so here appropriate grading is important because it's a low grade high grade gist or moderate uh, risk you should mention a for all the cases and that's a core data item so you have to mention this if they ask you in the possible uh, what is your possible diagnosis okay so as i said there are only few um, few specimens where you have to remember about the um, 
clinical core data items one is just so whether um, uh, what is a specimen type and what is the site of the tumor uh, because you know the uh, site of the tumor is also important because if uh, gastric tumors are going to have a better prognosis and if it's going to be colonic or uh, um, deordinal tumor, uh, deordinal or jejunal tumors, is have uh, it's going to have a bad prognosis compared to the uh, gastric. So all this you have to. So that's why it's important the specimen type and site of the tumor and any previous treatment. This is important again for the grading. If any, if a large size tumor, if the patient has been treat, taken any treatment and the size has been reduced so if the uh, you have to compare the size reduction from the uh, pre uh, before chemotherapy and after chemotherapy to look for the response and also if the patient has already received a treatment and the patient now the size hasn't reduced it is an important indicator that the patient might undergo um, TKI uh, resistance. So that is why the, any previous treatment history is important. That is why the clinical data is important. So when, uh, in case of just, if they ask you what are the essential core data items, here you are going to mention both clinical and also your microscopic. And they will ask you why it is important. So you have to mention all that. And macroscopic, you have already mentioned um, um, mentioned uh, all this in the uh, description of the specimen. Coming to the microscopic. Okay, so microscopic, uh, we all know that uh, first is a type. Type of the tumor, you have to mention spindle, epithelial, or uh, mixed type. So uh, most of the gastro, uh, most of the gist will have a spindle, but uh, gastric gist mostly you will have an uh, epithelial and the mixed cell type. And uh, this is also important sometimes. See, when I had this uh, exam, the long case was uh, just in stomach. Um, because most of the things were looking like only spindle. I was about to write like a uh, just spindle cell type. But then I remembered from the data sets, the most of the time it can be an epithelial and mixed uh, type. So remember and check carefully the slide. Then I went and checked for the epithelial areas, but it was there. See, what is most important in this exam is um, whatever we read is sometimes there and sometimes uh, um, um, you cannot extrapolate. See, for example, if just because it's gastric, it cannot be uh, it cannot be always epithelial and mixed cell. Unless you see, you don't write it. That is most important. See, I'm seeing most of them are spindle. I agree with it. I, uh, but I know somewhere the gastric... Uh, uh, gastric uh, tumors are going to have the epithelioid and mixed type, but I'm seeing a spindle cell. Unless if I see a epithelioid areas, do not give that uh, as an uh, epithelioid type or a mixed cell type because this exam is not like that. They will give you exactly what. Uh, unless you don't see it, you don't write it. That is what uh, I. So the epithelioid area was very minimal and it was only in the one focus. So the, uh, because um, this frightened me at that moment, so I went back and checked. And if not, uh, we would uh, definitely write it as a spindle cell. It was like that. Okay. Then comes the mitotic counter. So definitely we know that mitotic counter is most important because that's going to predict the tumor behavior. It's a good prognosis because AFIP grading, which I'll show you in the next slide. So that comprises of mostly the tumor size and the, based on the mitotic count. So. That is also important to predict the tumor behavior. Uh, so you should, uh, this is also important. When you go for the exam, you make sure what is your lens, whether it is uh, your older microscope or a newer one, and make sure uh, you uh, you see a slide and count it accordingly, 20 to 25, uh, how, many, how much is there, and 40x, how much wider your field is. Make sure all this, and then you give it. Because uh, that is also important sometimes, uh, in the case when you have an exam, when you have uh, the long case and everything, they expect you to give an uh, all, almost um, the same value of the because of one or two values. Like if uh, if it is increased and the mitotic count has been increased, and if you put it in a higher grade, you might lose marks. So in such cases, it's better to be on the safer side. You have you know uh, in how many uh, in your high power field how much is your uh, lens how much is an approximate time of square and measure it and uh, go for the exam okay uh, so uh, next uh, microscopic core data is a mucosal invasion see when you see an invasion in the chest you have to check for the lymphoma like pattern if it is there lymphoma like pattern is like like a tongue like pro projection where you see like it is going to invade uh, the uh, adjacent area. So if you see something like that, that is going to have an adverse prognosis. It's like a diffuse spread. You will see it on that. Uh, so that has an adverse prognosis. Even if you see a gist in the uh, microscopy for a short case or a long case, you are going to mention there is no lymphoma-like spread. So this is how it is important how the core data items you are going to uh, incorporate in your short case or a long case. 
So that's why it's important you read a data set first, then you go for the short case, then you will not have any problem in writing your remarks because most of the points you're going to write from this. Um, then the resection margins, Histo uh, definitely involvement of the resection margin is going to have a recurrence. And tumor. As I said, the previous treatment is important, whether the tumor is treated with any mantenum or any other TK or presence or response to the treatment, if the, the tumor size is decreased or if there is any macrophages or any fibrosis, all this, the presence of response to treatment, if it is there, you have to mention it. Okay, the surgery is generally the main stage, of, uh, mainstay of treatment uh, in case of chest, but for the large tumors, as I said, they may use the neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So, in that cases, you may be able to see uh, any loss of cellularity and sometimes a myxoid stroma. Uh, so, that's why I have mentioned here in the gross, uh, the tumor does not show any necrotic or myxoid area. The so, myxoid area significance is this. If the patient has already gotten treatment with the neoadjuvant chemotherapy, he or she might have, a, uh, the tumor might have a, a myxoid areas, so which gives you an idea again. Uh, um, this are the some kind of changes for neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And reduction in the mitotic activity or a K, probably, uh, K, K67. So initially if there is any biopsy and you can uh, compare with it uh, to know about the case mitosis has been decreased or increased. Okay, so this I think you got it, microscopic, what is the type, what is the mitotic count, the invasion, resection margin and whether the tumor is treated with imantinib. Uh, if the treatment, what is an importance of a neoadjuvant chemotherapy, why it is important, you should know. And for mitosis, it's 5 mm square, accordingly adjust with your microscope and go for it. Generally, it's 20 to 25 high power fields. Okay, then comes the other core data items, which is an IHC, which is also important. Um, uh, the IHC, you will have CC kit and C, uh, uh, C, uh, CED117 and uh, DOG1. They are definitely you have to perform for any tumor. Any tumor, if for the gist, if you see, you are going to perform it. They are sensitive, but not specific. But what are uh, the other markers like CD117, SNRID, um, uh, this SMA Desmin, or even um, the mutational studies, all this are done only on request. So remember that. So CD117 and DOG1 is a core data item. Rest all is IHC markers is performed only on request. Okay, so when CD117 is negative, this is not a core data item. I'm just explaining you this. When CD117 is a negative on IHC, but still the patient can have CKIT mutation or PDGFRA mutations. This CD117 negative just are generally going to have epithelioid and gastric. Epithelioid and gastric. See, this point I've incorporated in my um, long case as well. When I had the long case, I wrote this. This is an epithelioid gist. And I, uh, that case had CD117 positive. But I have, I mean, the one point which I got is CD117 negative just are most common. And uh, they are generally gastric as well. In such cases, I would perform CK mutation and PDGFRA mutations uh, as well. So to uh, that uh, kind of, see, uh, this I'm mentioning you all this because you should know how to incorporate all the data sets points in your short case and long case so that you don't read extra or uh, you don't uh, need to spend much time on reading some extra points for the short case and long case. Okay, so what is an importance of the CK PDGFRA mutation? Uh, See, up to this, the core data is done. Now I'm explaining the mutational analysis and just why it is important. Okay, CK, uh, if CK mutations, it can harbor in uh, three or uh, four exons. One is exon 11, one is exon 9, one is exon 13 and 17. So 11 is better to respond. Uh, they, are bet uh, they have a better response to imantinib. Okay, when 13 and 17, they have a moderate response. When the exon 9 is there, they may, uh, they have resistant or they uh, respond well to imantinum. So, we need to do a dose escalation or you need to add an additional TKA inhibitor. So, that is why the uh, exons are very important in case of CK and which will be done under mutational studies. Okay, in PDGFRA, it is 18. 18, you remember, they, they are going to have a poor response to uh, the TKIs. Uh, but, uh, so that's why the PDGFRA are generally, uh, you have to treat them aggressively with uh, 2 to 3 uh, TKIs or uh, additional uh, any chemotherapy agents should also be harbored with it. So, approximately one third of the PDGFRA have other such mutations as well, like STH, uh, BRAF, RAS. So, once you know the PDGFRA and the mutation is an exon 18, and you are supposed to do other rare mutations so that the patient can be benefited from the BRAF or um, BRAF inhibitors or anything. And if STH mutation is associated, it's possibly uh, 
uh, with it's a complex uh, it's possibly with other syndromes like carnes or uh, Str carnes strategy syndromes all this uh, you have to keep it in mind and you can write all this in your short and long case as well okay then uh, if when are you not going to perform a mutational analysis so if a patient uh, still has a cd117 negative uh, just and the patient has less than 1 cm you are not going to perform any mutational and because you know you need a lot of tumor tissue to analyze it. if less than 1 cm you are not going to uh, benefit from it so mutational analysis is not recommended so this is also important they might ask you uh, when are you not in k in viva they might ask you okay you're performing a mutation when will you not perform mutational analysis you can say it's less than one centimeter we were not going to perform any of this analysis okay coming to the uh, afip grading so as i said it is mainly based on the three things one is a site one other one is a size other one is a mitotic index based on the mitotic index it's classified into less than um, not equal to 5 and more than 5 uh, might not, um, um, per 5 mm square and in that uh, you are going to classify less than 2 cm 2 to 5 cm 5 to 10 cm more than 20, uh, 10 cm see in this time as I said in case of the long case they have mentioned the uh, size of the tumor was 16 cm so it is if they have they have given very clearly in the question that 16 cm just so in such cases it is uh, you are bound to give uh, the afip grading uh, accordingly so you have to count the mitosis and you have to uh, give the grading as well so this uh, you have to remember this okay so uh, tnm staging for the just the same as the afip grading it's from see if size if you take less than 2 2 to 5 more than 5 to 10 and less uh, 5 to 10 and more than 10 so the same thing is going for the t1 t2 t3 t4 and involvement of regional lymph nodes and test matters it's going to be very easy tm tnm for all okay this is all about the gist i got an idea the most important for the gist you have to remember about the uh, cd117 and dog it's a core data and cd117 negative can still harbor a ckit and pdgfra and why exons are important which exons are going to have a better response and which exons are not going to have a poor response and what is the uh, other um, mutation it can harbor and when are you not going to perform the mutational analysis afip grading and uh, tn